So what does a week of training look like for you outside of fights, like outside of leading up versus leading up? Uh, it's very similar. Uh, not a lot changes. I, I do my strength and conditioning work. Um, and then I do the pro session at B team, which is the midday session. And then we'll add in some drilling and stuff in the lead up specific to opponents and specific things that where I might be lacking in my game at that point in time. And then, uh, what'll, what'll vary is the intensity of the sessions, um, the CGI camp gave me a very good perspective. Dima ran an incredible camp and how he was running it uh, every day would have a specific intensity. Okay. And then we look to ramp intensity up towards the tournament and then um, add more volume when the intensity was lower. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because I guess like, you know, frequency of sessions for other sports generally seem to change massively. Like if you looked at a, a soccer player, an AFL player or whatever, like it's their cardio based training in the off season would be just huge. And then coming into the, or the, and their weights are probably up a little bit, a little less skills. And then that massive shift, but yours is more just about the volume and the intensity, not the actual training itself. Exactly. Uh, we was especially cause we were still trying to add in uh, technical aspects to the game as well. So we couldn't keep, like high intensity the whole time because we need to be adding uh more techniques more details mm -hmm. at the same time then apply the intensity later down so what does your gym training then look like how often are you doing that compound lifts i, I lift probably more than most guys in jiu-jitsu i lift five times a week mm -hmm. and i lift like based off a of power lifting uh regiment like i'll do my bench day on like a monday and then um add in like accessory lift like bodybuilding style accessories and then we'll squat on tuesday and then i'll give myself the break until friday to uh do my deadlift but in those middle days just do more access accessory lifts mm -hmm. so you then and you're on the mats almost every day or every day uh every day generally uh probably take sundays off most of the time depending yeah. what what's coming up is that one session two sessions it varies varies um Again, it varies on intensity and then drilling sessions depends where we are in the lead up from a tournament. Yeah, which I guess you can start to see once again, like hearing that breakdown of your week, that massive difference between the guys that I train with on the mat sort of thing as well. And then someone like yourself and all the guys at B team is kind of like, yeah, like I'm sure there's guys there that are that dead, like training that often and that frequently and whatever, but like, it's just kind of like, there's no way I could train multiple times a day. There's no way, like it's yeah. such a difference in, you know, scene of the type of people there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what about like from a recovery point of view, nutrition, is there anything that you kind of like really, really works for you or you just, whatever feels good. I'm terrible at both of them. <laughs> I eat like shit and sleep is the most important one, obviously. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. As long as I'm sleeping and for me, it's more, I do try and eat cleaner than I used to, but it's more calories in. Mm. versus calories out that's important to me at the moment well, i guess if you're not regardless of food quality if you're not getting enough in you're just going to start to shrivel away like. exactly and it becomes very difficult to eat very large amounts of very healthy foods it's oh, like yeah. the volume of food becomes impossible at a point so you've got to you gotta have a cheeseburger every now and then that's why that's why that's such a great strategy for weight loss is to do that healthy volume of volume food. food yeah but if you're on the other end of the equation you're like yeah this sucks Especially uh, these next three, these these next three fights being at heavyweight, it's like I'm a very like small heavyweight comparatively to some of the guys. Yeah. Um, I probably walk around between 100 and 105 kilos. You got guys up to 130, 140 plus uh, heavyweight. So um, when I'm like fighting at heavyweight as opposed to anything lighter, like under 99 is perfect for me. Um, I know. That's a nice cut for me. It's not too bad. Um, but when I'm at heavyweight, that's when the volume of food has to go up. Be, try and get up to like 107, 108 when I can. So that's what you'd hope to be for for your like. Hopefully for the next two matches, I'll probably be around that that weight. Yeah. Well, that's a big difference, isn't it? Like fluctuating up that 10 sort of kilo range as well, depending on who's going to be in front of you there as well. Yeah, exactly. Do you find that has a big impact on like gas tank, all those sort of things being a heavyweight? Um. Not really, honestly. I don't know. Maybe my cardio is always bad, but <laughs> <laughs> I, um, because I'm training, like, I'm training as I'm increasing my, uh, like, my mass, mm -hmm. I feel like there's not very much difference, you know. 
like my training intensity is going up anyway. So my cardiovascular system is improving as mm. the weight's coming on. Mm. How many do you, do you, would you roughly know how many calories you think you're consuming in a day when you're trying to get up to 107, 100? When I was getting really heavy, we were looking at like six and a half thousand plus. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell me, how, how are you getting that all in? Well, um, in Austin, there's this place called Cabo Bob's and they, they do burritos and the volume of burritos that was consumed during that camp, I think I kept the place in business. <laughs> and if it wasn't me, we were bringing like 10 guys a day to that place <laughs> after training. And we're getting like 2,000 calories of burrito plus tacos plus the, they have these little churro sweets. Hopefully they sponsor me after this. Yeah, yeah. I was because that's if they exist now that you're not in Texas. Uh, that's at the that's it. Once once the camp ended, it was funny. Like the lines looked dead. Everything <laughs> looked dead in there. I was like, oh no, what have we done to this place? You need to get like a little like collaboration with them and B team just so there's like some tickets on the way out. You can get like a little discount. Going. It was so <laughs> funny. My buddy Clank came over for the camp and uh, he commented something on their Instagram and they reshared it and like, <laughs> yeah, we're keeping, the, keeping that place afloat. Needs to become the jujitsu hangout sort of like. Man, that camp, it was like you bump into guys from other gyms in Austin that are there yeah. and like, it's funny. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know, there's people who get, that would be on their weight loss journey or weight gain journey and they're hearing that and they go six and a half thousand. Like that's just nuts. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was like, I try and eat frequently. It's trying to eat like at least six meals a day, you know? And that's a challenge in itself. Like you're just not hungry. Like you said earlier, like it's just... Like you have liquid calories, smoothies, those sort of things to try and help with that. Yeah, yeah. You, I think it's almost impossible to do if you're doing it purely on just food. It's so difficult. Um, but yeah, just trying to eat frequently and like as clean as possible. But sometimes it's just not going to be possible. Yeah, I just smash heaps of peanut butter. I, I'm a big <laughs> peanut butter guy. Yeah, especially in smoothies and stuff. And like, yeah, even if I'm having like a quick meal, it'll just be like peanut butter sandwiches. Yeah, just yeah. lathered up trying yeah. to get the calories. Head over to Jordan Checker Podcast to get the full exclusive experience.